Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Derek Maine and I talk about and celebrate and love literature. That's kind of a weird tagline. It also just came off the top. We're going to scratch that, but I want to hop on today, talk about a few books that I've read in the past few months that have made some sort of impact on me or I have, you know, um, what I think is maybe a relevant thought or opinion about. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. I'm not going to get super in-depth into any one title. Um, I'm going to talk about The Last Estate, specifically The Last Estate Book Club, which I'm hoping to entice one or maybe more of you uh, that, that like this channel to maybe uh, join or at least tune in, even if you're not going to actively participate. Um, and then I'll start off by explaining why I have had such another long break in between videos. And uh, this time, it's not, it's not life stuff, um, or work, or any, any of that. It's, um, I have spent the last few months finalizing um, all the last edits, proofs, uh, cover, everything for my first novel, uh, characters, which will come out on Expat Press. I'm not sure what day that I am posting this. I am recording it right now on Friday, May 20th, um, 2022. And I think um, pre-orders will start today. Yeah, either way, I'll put a link into the description. Uh, just a heads up for those who maybe don't follow me on any other social platform and only know me from here. Um, it is uh, experimental and transgressive and 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 so just kind of be forewarned I'm not going to get into any sort of synopsis or try to explain whatever but um, I also don't want you um, to pick something like that up at all if you are not comfortable with both experimental fiction and um, transgressive fiction okay so let me start first with The Last Estate this is what I've been spending a ton of my time on um, I'm really really excited and proud about this um, William Duryea of um, Misery Tourism, uh, one of the or the founder and co-editor there, along with Rudy Johnson, he, um, I think towards the end of last year, started reaching out to a group of folks and um, wanted to start a real sort of cultural um, magazine online um, that would uh, fill a gap where there wasn't a lot of like sort of long form writing that um, took itself not so seriously, but maybe uh, took its subject seriously, um, stuff that was going to celebrate art that was going to be kind of a joyful expanse while we are in the midst of um, what I would call a collapse, you know, whether that's societal, environmental, social, cultural, what have you. Um, so last dot estate. Um, and yes, it's dot estate like it used to be dot com. So that is the site. There's been a ton of really, really great stuff up there. And the first sort of interactive thing that we're going to do is a book club. And perfect for me to announce it on this channel since this started off as only translated literature. Our first book is a translated literature title and it is Demons by Dostoevsky. Um, the translation that I'm reading is the PNV. Um, translation and a couple of people are reading different translations one person's even reading the uh, devils you know it's got the different titles there so whichever translation you want to read I'll give you real quick how we're gonna do it we're gonna meet over zoom three times and the book comes in three parts so Wednesday June 1st is gonna be our part one discussion um, and that is going to be 9 p.m. Eastern on a Wednesday night. And you can join that Zoom if you like and participate. Or you can just join to listen in or watch with the few of us who are doing the talking. When that's done, I hope to record um, that first part, which I hope to be about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, since I'm extremely talkative. I'm sure other people are as well. And it's, there's a lot to discuss here. Um, I'll post it to my channel. And I'm hopeful to start doing a lot more of those sort of book club type things on this channel so that there's more voices than just mine. And um, so that it can have more of a community thing and not just focused in on my reading. So part one discussion, Wednesday, June 1st, 
Part two, a little bit longer. Each part's about 200 pages. Part two's a little longer, so there's some more time built in. Wednesday, June 22nd, and then part three, Wednesday, July 6th. And I'll put that down in the description so that you'll see that. Um, the way it's gonna work is if you are interested, you can send me an email um, at my first and last name at yahoo.com, which again, I'll put down in the description, um, just asking for the Zoom link. And then I'll send you the Zoom link. We're gonna do that so that we don't have a ton of trolls in the beginning. If you follow me on Twitter, you can also shoot me a DM over there. And uh, again, happy to sh uh, send you that, that Zoom link. I don't think YouTube has a messaging whatever, but yeah. So that's how that's gonna work. And even if you don't come to the live things to view or whatever, I hope you'll watch it later and uh, find it interesting. I picked Demons, or rather we had a group of us, but Demons because it has a lot to do with um, what happens when you have such polarized ideologies. And um, well, that seems very relevant. <laughs> All right, so those are those two things out of the way. Hit the six minute mark, perfect. I wanna do hopefully about 10 minutes on stuff I've read in the last few months and enjoyed. A couple of these books have been on this channel before because I had either started them or picked them up, but the first one I'm gonna talk about is The Complete Lungfish by Grant Meyer Hoffer. This is from Apocalypse Party Press. Um, came out this year. And another link I'll give, I did a really long, really long, but I think good, um, interview and back and forth with Grant about the Complete Lungfish um, for The Nervous Breakdown, one of my favorite literature sites, and just a fantastic conversation. Not because of me, I promise, solely because of him, but it's really good, I'll link that. This, um, I, it has a wonderful typesetting, as you can see, so many of his books really take hold of the physical object in such a creative way. I love that. But this book, um, The Band Lungfish, The Animal Lungfish, um, this is The Complete Lungfish. So I am not going to, it's, it's also sort of the complete inner, not complete, that can never happen, but the inner workings and thoughts of of the narrator author as well kind of intertwined as there's a search for meaning and connection between these two lungfish um and it is absolutely wonderful anyone who's followed me for a while knows grant meyerhofer is i think one of the best contemporary young writers um and certainly in america and I, um, and this was another huge hit for me, along the lines of Parapetet, which, from Inside the Castle, which I've talked about before and loved. Okay, this next book I did not love as much. You would think I did, but I did not. This is our man Celine's Fable for Another Time. And this is University of Nebraska Press, the French Modernist Library Series. And where is our translator? Mary Hudson. So this is an, an account when he's in the Dutch prison for collaborating with the Nazis. Um, and it's essentially all anger, screed, and lashing out at hypocrisy and humanity. And there are some funny lines within it. Um, I'm trying to be a bit of a completist with Celine because I'm so fascinated with him. I know I spoke um, about the biography that I read recently on this channel, which is just sitting right here so I can, you know, pull that up again. But, um, you know, fascinated with him from a, from a literary historical, his oh my gosh, from a historical literary, a literary historical, oh my God, from a literary perspective. Um, and uh, this one just did not do it for me in the sense that it was all anger, not enough poetry. And perhaps um, that could be said as an, an issue for him overall. On the other end of things, one of the best books I've read in a really long time and filled with poetry is Harry Crews, A Feast of Snakes. And just a tremendous story. It is an absolute page turner and burner um, of this rattlesnake 
festival where you try to go kill as many and capture as many of these rattlesnakes as you can. The cast of characters and the human drama um, is second to none. And um, after not loving, I think it's called, it's got hell in the title. That's about um, a bodybuilder. And actually one of the characters is an overlap here. A piece of, hell. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna mess up. After not loving that, uh, I was so excited to get this and, and, and to love it. And next I'm gonna read his childhood um, biography of a place, which I think is uh, possibly considered maybe one of his classics. So anyway, yeah, huge, huge um, fan of A Feast of Snakes. I just most recently finished this collection of essays, Thank You for Not Reading, by Dubrovka Ugresic, translated from the Croatian by Celia Hawksworth. This was winner of the Neustadt Prize. And this is a tremendous collection of short essays, primarily written in the late 90s, um, concerning the literary marketplace and agents, booksellers, publishers, what they want from authors, um, but also a really interesting and, and novel connection to social realism. And uh, frankly, they just, they're usually three to four pages each one. They fly off with humor, with wit, and it's incredible to me how completely relevant these her points are her perspectives even now some 30 years later um, really had um, obviously a great view of the international publishing industry because she is sort of a writer without a without a homeland um, and I won't get too much into her and, and all that but this is from open letter I have read Fox and The Age of Skin by her from Open Letter, and Open Letter has really been a champion of her writing. Anything that you can get your hands on, I would. I, so far, have happened to like her essays quite a bit more, and this was tremendous, quite a bit more than her fiction. And that's not a you know, knock, knock on her fiction, it's just I, her essays are really, really good. I've been reading The Collected Stories of Lydia Davis after I finished the two essays. Lydia Davis, as far as the stories are concerned, very hit or miss, but if you know anything about her, many of them are quite short. And this is a really nice thing to just sort of pick up. You know, do you like one? Is it cool? Do you not? Um, I will say, I think, I'm gonna say this about her from a story perspective, is that some of the length, and this is truly, you know, what we'd call now flash fiction or whatever, but some of the length of them kind of makes them more akin to a clever punchline at times with not a lot of meat on the bone. And I know that that is a stylistic preference on my part, but um, as someone who is uh, pretty firmly, I mean, I love maximalist literature, you know, I like when an author stretches out and what she does, like, as the writer in me, I, I find it really helpful because it helps me call my own instincts and my own sentences um, because it is so economical. It is so tight. There is nothing wasted. But you can almost, in, in many ways with Lydia Davis's story, just see the squeezing and the effort it takes to just bonsai tree this thing into such a tight space. And I want to roam bigger and I want to see wider and farther and I frankly I miss some of that in some of her stories while others um, are truly kind of pitch perfect. Recently I also read White Noise by Don DeLillo and it once again underwhelmed me. Uh, it's a really easy read. It blows right through the university stuff and sort of that suburban malaise um, you know Hey, it nails it, right, um, for that time period. I, I close my eyes and I imagine sort of a uh, uh, one of those like brick stoops and someone in that Subaru Wagoneer, you know, driving to their university job and um, uh, drinking too much wine and smoking too many pipes on the weekends and um, having these sort of domestic disturbances amongst their little group of professor and community friends. And that stuff is, you know, that's fun. We've read it or, or seen um, a lot of culture around that. So not a ton new to say, but of course, this um, what is one of the finest examples of it. Um, but the other stuff, okay, I guess I like, I like the element of like, 
what um, stimulation kind of does in modernity, you know, how it affects us, um, how noise affects us, sort of the, the thought of walking in the supermarket and, and just being bombarded with everything. Um, but it feels a little bit to me, white noise, um, overread, overstudied, over talked about. Um, I think that it's a great book from its time. I love Don DeLillo. I mean, I think he's well like Don DeLillo. Maybe you should say that. Um, I've read Libra, Mal 2, Cosmopolis, and White Noise. So um, clearly, having not read Underworld, I'd say, I don't know if I can, you know, feign a complete opinion on his work. But regardless, uh, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about it. I mean, I like it. It's good. It feels kind of stuck in time. It, it feels a little bit dated at this stage. Unlike the last one I'm going to talk about, which I know I featured in the channel because I love the cover so much. I, I finished it and then I reread the last section again. And this is Larry Why Would He's What I'm Going to Do, I Think. There he is on the back. I'm going to say this one... Thought this won an award, but it does not say that. But this is his first novel, um, and it is all right. Nineteen sixty-six. This one happens to be seventh printing, nineteen sixty-nine. Okay, it is tremendous, tremendous, quiet, unsettling in many ways, sort of horror, underneath this horror, kind of like how Bolaño does. Of course, you know, I can't get through a video without without saying him. Um, story of a very newly um, wed couple as they, for their sort of honeymoon, um, take over her grandparents' remote cabin in the um, upper eastern peninsula of Michigan, very rural uh, area. And it's a psychological sort of thriller, I mean, for lack of it, but but completely literary and beautiful. And there's passages that'll make you weep. And I did not know what was going to happen. Literally, I'm serious, until three sentences to the end. It is that well-crafted, the technical, like, skill that he shows in this is phenomenal from a plot standpoint. The characterizations... Phenomenal. There are a couple characters we meet once in one scene and you get a full scope and sense in a way that only someone truly masterful could do. I believe he's still alive. He was in Montana somewhere in his 70s. Never read anything else. Um, I think this may have been um, Orpheus, another booktuber that I first saw talked about this one um, and got... And then kind of sat on a shelf. And then recently I opened, you know, not recently, it was a couple months ago, but um, opened it, went through it, and was was really, really stunned. If you can get a copy of this, um, I could not recommend it highly enough. Okay, so 18 minutes, that's pretty good. Went through some books I'm reading, talked about Last Estate, Last Dot Estate. Uh, our latest article is uh, about a reading that we hosted in Los Angeles. Um, specifically Gabriel Hart, the author, journalist, musician, um, and, and uh, one of the people that um, works, is, is, is does Last Estate. He hosted this reading with a lot of really cool young authors. And then um, the crew at the Last Estate did like a old school Vanity Fair style spread um, with fashion, photography, multimedia from the reading, um, and then Gabe's truly excellent personal story um, from the reading. So I'm going to link that as well. Um, that's the newest story that's up. Uh, really, really happy with it. And, and check through the archives and see. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I think, um, you know, you might find interesting there. And we're, uh, we're really trying this, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, put something out that doesn't exist um, and, and hopefully we'll find some readership and whatnot. All right. Thank you very much. I hope everyone's doing great. I talked really fast and that's because I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? A hundred thousand reasons. Be good to folks.